I'm going to talk a little bit about um, my history with eating disorders and what I faced. Okay, as a 16, 17 year old, uh, I developed anorexia. You know, I was rowing uh, in a rowing team and, and I got injured and it just developed. Okay, I just developed an eating disorder, anorexia, and it was hard, right? We all know what it's like. It's very rare as a male to have an eating disorder. I was about 96 pounds and my parents did hospitalize me. And I had so much resentment towards them. Even though the hospitalization process didn't help me at all, which I think it just, eating disorder is a, is a mental challenge. Okay, it starts and finishes here. Okay, no ex external stuff can help, but if you don't wanna stop, you're, you're never gonna stop. You, you have to reach rock bottom uh, to stop, so to say. Okay, after anorexia, I, I developed bulimia. Okay, well, what bulimia is, if you don't know, you eat lots of lots of quantities of food uh, in a short period of time and just and just purge it, you know, just puke it all. And it's very addicting in a sense that there, there's tons of studies out there. It's just, uh, it just shows that there's a dopamine rush and there's a sense of, um, you know, I'm not gonna say endorphins running, but there's that like reward channel when you puke, okay? It just, you just get that rush. And you feel awful after you puke. When you're binging, you know, they say it's something that you, you can control. There's externalities in your life that you can't control. And then they say food is something you can control. Well. In my experience, this is not this is not how I felt, or this is not how I feel. Okay, I just I just felt like my bulimia is triggered by my loneliness. Okay, I, when I feel lonely, I I get all these food, and because of my whole restrictive diet of this gym and healthy eating, uh, I don't get to eat my junk food, and I just get to eat whatever I want during these uh, binges and and. I, I just puke it all and I don't even worry about the calories, so to say, uh, even though, you know, you absorb a certain percentage of the calories that you consume. It's just such a cycle and it's so hard to break and it just messes up your whole, whole social life and it messes up your mental state, it puts you in a shitty mood and it's, it's very hard to overcome. What I would like to advise people that are facing eating disorders is to understand the fact that it all ends with your comfort level and with your relationship with food. Okay, once you get over that self image, that body image, that you think that you should have or think that society imposes you to have and then you will be able to overcome this eating disorder or whatever you're feeling with binge eating restricting anorexia bulimia okay i know it's easy to say you know i'm still battling with it so I'm not going to lie and pretend and say, look, look, look at me. Wow. Okay. Oh, he looks decent. Oh, fuck. I overcame uh, eating disorder. You know, just subscribe to my channel. Yada, yada. No, that's not true. Okay. But a lot of people share that being lonely does not help. So when you're feeling lonely, you know, you should distract yourself. That helps for my bulimic episodes. And when I remind myself how shitty my next day will be, how shitty I will feel after I purge, how shitty my body will react to it in the next few days by retaining water, you know, digestive problems. It's just not worth it, okay? That's the only way that I can decrease my episodes and which has helped a lot, right? Instead of binging, purging every day, I can go two, three weeks without binging and purging, 
reminding myself this. And then once my body craves that food, that junk food, that pizza, that donut, I still can't have a healthy, um, healthy relationship with food. So I can't really consume those things without purging. And when I'm lonely, when I need comfort, I eat those things and I purge it. And it will end, you know. I went three, four years without binging and purging once. And the way I did it was I focused my entire energy and that whole body image extremity to a whole nother extreme of bodybuilding. Well, I used copious amounts of steroids. I focused on my physique eight, seven times a day, gained a lot of weight. And I, I just, you know, I was just going through like a tunnel vision to, uh, to forget about my eating disorder. And I realized that, you know, it's from one extreme to another. I, I couldn't beat anything. I just kind of went from one disease, so to say, to another. Um, it's more acceptable. It was more acceptable, but neither of them is healthy. So um, I can't give you the answer of recovery. Um, there's tons of people that talk about recovery, their experiences, but it all will start and end with you. You know, you can listen to tens of thousands of self-help tapes, other people's experiences, your self-worth, having a healthy relationship with food, but it all boils down to your self-will and how strong you are, how, how bad you want to do it. Okay, you should have something in your life a turning point, so to say, uh, to make you realize how bad you want to do this. Okay, how bad you want to give up. It's just like smoking. How bad do you want to give up smoking? Okay, how bad do you want to give up using drugs? There should be a big motivating factor for you to do this. Okay, and once you do this, you know, I'm looking forward to the day where I binge and purge feed for 10 years, 20 years. And it just puts a smile on my face. And you know, I, I have the willpower to stop for weeks. So, I mean, why not years? But I'm just sharing my struggle with you. Um, bodybuilding goes head to head with unhealthy relationship with food. Um, and it's the truth, you know, you see all those guys with amazing physiques with, you know, a couple percent body fat and, you know, having veins popping out of their body. It's not just, it's not just steroids, you know, they do take steroids as well, but it's not just steroids. It's, it's a very strict eating regimen, right? It's, it's a whole lot of dedication and, you know, it's not just the training as well. It's, it's just the food. It's just bland, you know, same food, lean meat, healthy fats. It's not it's enjoyable, right? At the long run, it's not enjoyable. People might say, you know, they enjoy eating healthy. There's eating healthy and there's restricting uh, your food intake and your food choices to look like that. Okay, healthy eating is completely different than reaching that type of physique. And you might be blessed. Some people out there might be blessed with the amazing metabolism and a very select few might look like that, that lean. But the average Joe, what it will take for them to look like that is a lot of training, a lot of restricting food, and performance enhancing drugs. Okay, and this is the truth. And that's why steroid usage is so common among teens. It's so common in our day of age. And it's just, you know, we're seeing more deaths now on the social media with these gurus and phenomenons and bodybuilders. Um, they're not saying it's, it's mostly because of steroid usage, but it surely does contribute to their health, to their negative health, right? I mean, yes, everybody can have a heart attack, but the chance of you having a heart attack due to an enlarged heart, due to usage of growth hormone and steroids and, you know, blockage of your veins is much higher than somebody that doesn't use steroids. You know, you might die of lung cancer if you don't smoke, but the chances of you dying from lung cancer is way higher if you smoke, then, then you don't, okay? It just comes down to it, right? When it's your time, it's your time, you go. 
I'm not debating on that. I'm a believer in God, but we're talking the reality here, okay? We're putting ourselves in risk. Yes, we're putting ourselves in risk every day when we, you know, drive a car or cross a sidewalk. But come on, like, that's not my point, okay? I know there's gonna be tons of people that say these things, but I mean, you get the point here. Okay, um, if you have any questions or anything, I can touch more upon uh, my eating disorder, but this is just an inform informative video or just, just a little uh, video that will shed some light on my uh, past with an eating disorder and my present with an eating disorder, so to speak. Uh, tune into the next video. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna talk about yet, but I'm sure it's gonna lead uh, to further videos to reach my goal of creating this channel. It's just, I'm just starting up, so bear with me here, okay? Thank you.